Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. Um, I've been pretty busy off camera. Um, nothing too crazy. Just kind of doing some busy work and fixing some things up. But I figure the first thing I show you. All right. So the first thing I figured I show you is some work on the castle. I believe last time I showed the castle, it was just this part done right here, this middle piece. Um, I've since expanded it and um, cut out the ground right there. I'm debating on whether or not I want to keep it red. I'm thinking about making it a different color. I'm not 100% sure yet. And also, this acacia um, gateway right here is definitely going to change. I was trying to find a different um, block there, or a block to fit there, um, different from spruce to make the gate stand out, but I think it's just going to end up being spruce. Also, I have a couple of dirt patches in here, or grass patches, because um, I'm trying to get some sheep to spawn. I'm just not 100% sure if they can actually spawn on Mushroom Island. I actually had a huge um, pad of um, grass above the mob farm or above the ocean right there and AFK overnight but nothing spawned so I took it down. Um, so I'm not sure if A they, or sheep can spawn on Mushroom Island I'm not sure if they can spawn in the ocean either so we'll have to figure that out soon. Um, worst case scenario I can just go get some sheep from an island somewhere. Um, I know there's an island over there, or a small island, that I can maybe AFK there one night, and hopefully get some sheep. Next thing I did off camera is make a storage system for the potatoes and carrots. Uh, I think there's about five double chests, um, four wide, so that's about 20 um, double chests per each um, carrot and potato. Plus a shulker box down here to where I can just take them whenever I want. Um, the potatoes have actually filled up already, and the carrots are pretty close. Yeah, I think they have about two more double chests to go. Uh, if we come back here, um, down here was where the original storage room is. If I started to work on this, it actually works. Um, it is a shulker box unloader and loader, I think is what you would call it. So basically, um, you would place a shulker box here, and once it um, fills up, this piston would break it, and it would fall into that hopper, and then... Um, and it would dispense another shulker box. This is working um, as far as I remember, but I decided to not use shulker boxes as the main storage. I decided to just go for chests and only use eight. And I can just take those eight whenever I need them and then replace them and we'll just fill up. But I was pretty um, happy that I could come up with this um, design. Obviously it's not very compact compared to other people's. Like I think um, Nem Bomber El Mango has one that fits in like a five like by one but it's like seven high maybe but yeah um, this works pretty good so if I ever need one this is probably what I'll go with but um, this is how many shulker boxes were um, being used for just carrots and potatoes so that's why I decided to um, not go with that route plus one more we've also been digging out this area um, across from the breeder right here um, I don't think this is what we're going to be working on today, but I just, um, in my downtime from recording, when I can't record, I just tend to do busy work. So I decided to dig this out for a future project. But if we come in here where the portal is, um, I have a little bit of an enchanting area right here to where I can just break these blocks right here whenever I want to get in here or just go through right here now. But um, I decided to put um, some storage for the iron farm down here. Originally, I just had the chests up there, and I only had about three, and that would fill up pretty much every day I feel like uh, every two days probably it would fill up so now uh, I have this huge storage I mean, not huge but a decent amount and um, yeah it's working out pretty good behind it I have a filter for all the roses that come through and I'm just painting them in a composter and this is how much we've gotten so far for some reason I originally had a rule to where I had to keep all the roses I don't know why uh, I just thought it was kind of cool to see all of them but I figured this would be a much better use for them uh, I've also dug out this side a little bit but now that I've dug these out um, I don't know if I'm actually going to use this much space um, so a lot of this is end up being just not used probably um, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but it might look weird if I ever do like a world tour. Alright, but last thing I've been working on is this mess in here. Main thing is back here, and these blocks right here are indicators that some of these guys need to be converted still to get the lower trades, or the better trades. But uh, it's mainly been this right here. Um, these guys all have the bookshelf trade and the book trade. 
I'm not. I don't think I showed it. I think I ended up cutting it out or something. But um, originally, my original beacon, my first beacon, was made all out of emerald blocks. And I actually got the emerald blocks from doing this trade right here. Uh, if you get both of these down to one emerald, um, you can trade. I think twelve emeralds for thirty-six um, bookshelves. <laughs> I lost my train of thought again. I don't think I showed this, but I think the, I don't think I showed this, but the way I got my first beacon was actually um, through these trades right here. My original beacon was made all out of emerald blocks, and I got it from trading the bookshelves and then trading the books back to the villager. If you trade 12 um, emeralds and you can get 36 bookshelves, which um, then goes into, I think, 108, if I'm doing the math correctly. 108 books so basically for 12 emeralds you get 108 emeralds back really it's a 96 emeralds of profit so you get 96 emeralds of profit per 12 emeralds which is really good obviously uh, I'm assuming they're gonna patch this somehow in the next update because that's just completely OP there's really no point to do any other trade so if I take all eight of those shulker boxes I have over there and trade them all to these um, farmers, which um, I'm pretty sure you can get these lower. Um, but this is just one cure of the zombies. But if you trade eight shulker boxes of potatoes and carrots, I think you get about five stacks of emeralds. Which is not great. So this really is the way to go while it's in the game. Um, I'm expecting it to be taken out in the next update. So that's why I kind of set this up. Oh, and the other thing I was working on in here is in this... Um, light right here so if we come back here um, this actually lights up when it's time to trade so when the workday or when the workday starts this lights up I think I got this from Iskal 85 hopefully if not I'll put it on the screen who it is um, it might be someone else but it's super simple I looked this up about a month ago how to do it and everything I looked up just didn't really come up with anything um, I couldn't get the wording right. I didn't even know what this is called. I'm not even sure what it's called now. But basically, um, when this daylight sensor uh, reaches a certain time, it's comparing the signal from this. When these signals match, then it outputs. It's a little off. This actually starts about probably like 10 to 20 seconds before they can actually reset their trade. And it also goes on for about 10 to 20 seconds after they can or after the work day to where they can't reset their trade anymore but i know i just didn't explain this right um i'm horrible at explaining redstone so if you want to know how that works go check out iskal 85's video um it'll be in the description but yeah all these rails are here because i basically had to move um the villagers from here that were here because they didn't have the right trade and i moved them down there and i also had to move some in here and also i had this little lectern right here of what um, books I have and where they're at so the number one right here corresponds to um, this first villager right here um, so he has a mending and fire aspect too and it just goes down the line so this is about I think this is um, number eight right here and then this is 13 and then it continues down here and um, this guy is 14 15 16 17 18 19 and I don't have these guys in the book yet. This is an easy way to organize what books I have. And yeah. I finally got an Unbreaking 3 villager right here. Um, so he's actually number 2. And I'm getting ready to get rid of my doubles. I have a few. I have a couple channelings. Let's see. I have 1, 2, 3. Yeah. And a few silk touches as well. Oh, I guess that's actually not the last thing I worked on. Um completely forgot about this uh, I just went ahead and did the first layer of the storage system there wouldn't really be much to show besides the layout of it which I already showed a little bit um, unfortunately the circle didn't or the circle design doesn't work no matter what I do um, these two are always going to interfere with each other just the way the wiring is back there which makes sense so yeah this is just way too complicated for me uh, I'm sure someone could get this to work 
Uh, but I ended up just having to go with the straight square design um, and just rows. The first layer is basically just um, redstone. Um, a lot of the normal blocks I just get, um, like anthracite, diorite, uh, stone, cobble, and grass and sand and stuff like that. Uh, and then all the woods um, go over here, and then all the ores are right here as well. And I have about three chests of just overflow. Um, which I try not to throw too much stuff in here. Um, it probably looks like a lot, but I've, I haven't recorded an episode in a week. So this is about a week or two of the stuff I've accidentally thrown in there, which I'm not sure how this got in here. Um, that's concerning. Oh yeah. This one, um, section right here isn't set up cause I wanted to show that, um, I couldn't get the work. Hopefully that's everything I haven't shown. And normally I would show me doing this stuff, but, um, the past couple of weeks, there's just been a lot of stuff going on to where I, only, I, I definitely didn't have time to record. But I figured I'd show the next thing we're going to work on. So we are across from the trading hall. The trading hall is on that side. And um, I've started to dig out a little bit over here. There's a tree farm. Um, and I've started to put signs of what I kind of want to do in each area. Um, they aren't 100% set in stone, but those are just kind of my ideas for that area. So right here, I'm thinking a bamboo farm and a smelter. Oh, I guess um, one more thing to show you is that beacon right there. Uh, I actually have beacons on all four sides now and also in the middle. So that's pretty perfect. So now I shouldn't run out of haste no matter where I am. But my plan for this area is to have a bamboo um, farm on this side and a sugarcane farm on this side, which means I think we're gonna have to get rid of the slime farm. But if we come down here to where everything collects for the slime farm, I have three um, or nine double chests of slime. I guess that shouldn't be in there. But yeah, I have th or nine double chests of slime. And this definitely filled up in far less than a week. It might have been like th three days that this filled up. So I'm okay with either A, just completely getting rid of the slime farm, or B, just um, making it smaller to fit in the sugarcane farm. But yeah, the plan is bamboo farm on this side, sugarcane farm on this side, and then under it, on the second level of this um, circle, will be a smelter that's going to be powered by the bamboo farm, basically. Originally, I planned on doing a kelp farm, but bamboo is just much better for that because you don't have to craft it or smelt it first either so that's perfect but today we're actually gonna be working on the sugarcane farm the main reason being is I am out of sugarcane um, so I just used the rest of my sugarcane to make some rockets and I'm completely out of sugarcane now so um, I think I have maybe like 10 sugarcane left which can start this farm I'm not 100% sure what, I'm gonna, what farm I'm gonna go with or what design I think I'm gonna go with a nano farm um, from the SciCraft server I believe not, I don't remember exactly who does it. It's one of the people on that server, I believe. Also, I'm not 100% sure that still works in the game. If it doesn't, obviously, I'll just do maybe like a slime pusher or just kind of one of those old school designs with pistons and everything. But yeah, I'm going to do some research on what design works still and what design I want and start to set that up a little bit. So I'll be back. Okay, so before we actually get started on that, um, I had to go look for some sugar cane because I was actually completely out. Um, and I found this, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's some underwater ruins, but they're above water. Interesting. Oh yeah, I've actually been here before. How did I miss the outside ruins? What the heck? That's kind of crazy that I missed this, but yeah, as you can see, I've been here before. Uh, I didn't just do this right now. So yeah, I was, um, kind of just exploring the other day, and, um... Decided to go hunt for some um, treasure chests, which I only got one because every time I open this, it's the same map, which I don't remember how you're supposed to make that not happen. Um, I thought it was just destroying the chest, but that doesn't seem to be working. But yeah, while searching for um, treasure maps, um, I actually came across... Uh, where is it? Well, it's not in my ender chest for some reason, but I came across a trident. Yeah, I don't remember where I put the trident, which is kind of concerning me right now. Um, hopefully I still have it. Um, but yeah, um, I'll insert the clip of where I got it.
I wasn't recording originally. But I saw the guy dropped it and I started to freak out so I immediately like paused my game and started recording. Or the trident dropped and another guy ended up picking it up so they just um so I had to kill that guy so but I got it in the end so that's pretty cool. Uh, I figured we could look for sugarcane real quick together and sheep I suppose. Sheep perfect, okay. I think I just passed some sugarcane as well. Nope, okay. So this island right here is about two or three hundred blocks away from the mushroom island over there, so I can just boat these sheep over eventually. But I wasn't actually planning on getting a trident from that. I mean, obviously that's awesome, but I was actually planning on doing an episode of making a trident farm and then doing some other stuff, um, which I might still do, just um, I don't definitely need it as much now. The reason I need a trident is so I can go get uh, or take on a guardian temple because I don't want to do that without a trident. A trident just makes that way easier and a much easier process and then the main, or there's a couple of reasons uh, we need the um, guardian farm. The main reason right now is so I can get the sponge from it. Uh oh. Ooh, maybe there's a outpost out here. I don't actually want to kill that guy, right? But yeah, the main reason we need the sponge is because I want to make a squid farm eventually. Um, I'm actually gonna fly around and look to see if there's an outpost around here. Still have not found sugarcane. Interesting. Wait. Did I? I do have some. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing an outpost around here. But yeah, I figured I'd just fill you in real quick on why that trident is kind of important. Oh man, so I did decide to go searching for one of these. Um, this is actually the first one I've ever found. And it's relatively close to my base. Um, I did fly for about 15-20 minutes, um, so I think my base is that way, hopefully, if I remember correctly. If not, I'll have to search my coordinates again. I always lose my base to where I have to go through my notes or something to find my coordinates or go through or go look for a screenshot of it. Um, so I'm very bad at remembering coordinates, just gonna point that out. Um, but yeah, super excited about this. Um, this is the first time I've ever been to one of these, actually. Oh, oh, I didn't know it would do that. Uh-oh. Okay, so I didn't think they would alert everyone that I'm here. So if you shoot one, it alerts the other ones. Interesting. I did not know that. Uh, let's pop down, look in the chest. Uh, nothing of value except that bottle of experience, I guess. So I guess I'll take that. I definitely think we're going to be making a farm out of this. So I'm going to definitely mark down these coordinates. This isn't the most ideal spot, I suppose. Now I think about it, but that's not really that big of a deal. Hopefully. I'm debating right now if this is the one I want. It seems to be doing a good job of spotting them, but that might just be the initial spawn that spawns with the generation of it. I'm assuming that some spawn with the generation to where we normally wouldn't be getting these rates from it. Although that guy just spawned. I could always go into like a midst or something and search for one maybe like by an ocean or something but i think this is gonna be okay so yeah um definitely gonna be coming back here to make a farm i think all right well i think we'll head back to the sugar cane farm now all right and it is up and running um super simple to build um it's actually il mango's um design but yeah uh it seems to be working so this is probably what we'll go with um if I remember correctly, there was a bigger design of this I might go with now that I think about it. Not 100% sure. Um, not sure if we're going with this color either. I'm not sure how it looks with um, Acacia. And if we just pop it on real quick, I went ahead and turned off the sound because it's super loud. And as you see, it works. Um, it's not 100% um, guaranteed to go in the hopper, but I think that's fine to be honest. Uh, it's just one every once in a while with how much is it going to produce and if I do multiple of these I don't think it's going to matter. Um, I've been writing this less than a minute um, through testing and everything and just right now so let's see how much we got. Not bad. About half a stack in about a minute um, is really great actually so perfect. Okay. So yeah mainly right now I just wanted to figure out if it still worked and so 
this may not be the um, final place it's going to be at. Uh, I'm going to figure out how this hallway is going to work. I'm definitely seeing how I set it up already. This is probably two, uh, at least one, two forward. So I might need to push it back one more. But we'll see. But yeah, I'm going to start to figure out um, how everything's going to work real quick. So I'll be back. Okay, and the farms are done. I decided to go ahead and just fit the bamboo side in too, as um, as well. Uh, I figured um, just because I was already watching the tutorial, and not really sure why that happens. That's interesting. Randomly, um, the sugarcane um, uh, pistons just randomly fire every once in a while. Not really sure what makes that happen, but yeah, uh, I put the bamboo on this side, and have all the wiring um, connected to one wire to where um, I can just click one lever. I don't have to individually turn everyone on. Yep. Uh, bamboo's um, way faster than the sugar cane, by the way, um, which um, El Mango says in the video. Yeah, uh, I almost have, I have a little over half a hopper already of that, and this one is just about a sack and a half so um, it's not, I think it's about double the the time or double the rate of sugarcane it seems like alright but since we got this in now um, I figured we would get the collection in or the collection system in uh, before we do that I wanted to note that this is a slime chunk and so is this apparently so um, maybe eventually we're going to um, carpet right here. Is there a reason they can't spawn here? Ooh, slime can't spawn above 40, right? Or 40, like they can spawn on 39, but not 40, right? That might be perfect. I'm not sure. I have to look that up, but I'm pretty sure slime can't spawn here. That's perfect. Yeah, 99% positive um, spot or slime can't spawn right here, but they can spawn down here um i'm not really sure how their spawning works like how much um airspace around them they need i'm assuming this would be enough to like especially right here well maybe that would um mess with it but i'm assuming they could periodically spawn down here i don't know if that's gonna be a big deal or not if it is i'll end up um carpeting it or something but uh for over here i'm going to just wall it off right here um uh, right here yeah i'm just gonna i'm gonna either put a wall here or here where they can still spawn right here but that's about it yeah um i'm probably gonna put that wall in right now and then start on the collection system uh, i'm thinking we're pretty much gonna do the same exact collection system as the carrot and potato one i showed you earlier um so we'll have um, the sugar cane on this side and the bamboo on this side maybe uh yeah we should be able to fit that in there and then in the middle right here um we'll have the slime maybe um, only thing I'm concerned about is if I expand this, which I don't know if I am. If I do, then the slime will have to go somewhere else. But, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get started on that, and I'll be back when I'm done with it. Oh, another thing I wanted to point out is, um, like we did with the roses at the iron farm, we're going to have the same thing over here. We also have that with the potato and carrot farm over there. So, any, um, extra sugar cane is going to be going to bone mill at least for now um any extra bone or uh bamboo is going to be going into the composter if it works not 100 percent sure you actually fit bamboo and composter now i think about it and slime does not go into a composter so um i guess we'll just kind of have a trash for that maybe and my plan for um kind of all the areas that have the bone mill like the iron farm and the potato is to um eventually consolidate them all into one area um to where either they'll be in like a water stream or a hopper line and then they'll all be bone milled in one area and then I'll have a storage for the bone mill right around there. I'm assuming it'll be somewhere over here just because I think pretty much the only thing I need bone mill for is this. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm still pretty solid on that. Uh, maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're decently solid. 
For some reason, this side likes to drain more than this side. Not really sure, unless I just filled it up unevenly, which I'm pretty sure they were pretty close to even when I filled them up. But the ultimate goal would be to not have to um, convert bones into bone meal. And for that, at least, um, that'd be really helpful to never have to convert the bones from the farm. Um, it's because that's really annoying and it takes forever. And also, this farm will not be running 24-7. 100% not going to be running on camera um, and probably not going to be running if I'm playing. Um, it'll probably just be when I'm AFKing at night or whatever or whenever I AFK. So yeah, I just want to say those things real quick and so I think I'm going to start on the storage. Alright, all the collection um, systems are in now. Um, I also have already AFK'd overnight. Um, if we take a look in here, uh, I believe we got up to about right here, so about halfway full um, for sugarcane. And over here, I actually did it AFK overnight with the bamboo because I only had to AFK about um, a couple hours and um, it already got to about here. So. Um, I decided not to run that just because um, bamboo actually doesn't go into composters so they would all just be wasted after that once they got full so uh, I figured that would just kind of be wasteful and I've also put separate on and off switches for them just because um, this one is gonna run more often than this one um, also thinking about maybe only doing one bamboo and having these two also be sugarcane um, just because, or maybe at least one more sugar cane, just because bamboo is so much quicker. And some off-camera work I've been doing is digging out some of this um, stone underneath um, this level right here for when we expand the storage system and the circle. And also I have uh, expanded the mob farm right there. Originally I had the um, timer for the dispensers on the bottom and that's only when I had one level. You can't actually run observers going up. Um, they actually have to be running down um, for the for the pulse to go one time. Um, if you do it from the bottom, they're just going to keep on pulsing because the observers keep on observing over and over again. It will stop after like probably like 7 to 10 clicks, but then they get all out of sync and this doesn't work. So you have to do it from the top. I need to eventually figure out a way to... Do it from the bottom. Yeah, so I might have to do it from the top for now. And I don't want to do that because I was originally having, or my original plan was to have the whole mob farm open and to where I could see it from up here. And uh, this wouldn't look good from uh, with all this redstone up here. And another thing I've been doing off camera is um, giving the um, zombies down here swords. Not convert the villagers just because it's a lot quicker of a process. They only have to hit them once or twice. If you don't give them swords, um, they have to give them like five to ten times usually, which is um, it just takes a lot of time. And also, if I'm right here and I'm trying to get this guy to be converted and I send him down, the zombie won't actually go after him because he's locked on me right now. And so I have to either leave or push him down, then leave like way over there. And even then, that doesn't usually work. So it's getting them to be converted is just a whole process. So I'm trying to figure or make that quicker. And these or these swords are actually from um, end loot. Uh, I figured that'd be a good way to use the swords. Uh, I'm not sure if the curse of vanishing would matter on a zombie. I'm actually not sure how curse of vanishing works. From what I remember, it only applies when you die to where it could just disappear when you die. I don't think it'll just randomly disappear out of your inventory. Oh, um, another thing is the main way I get redstone right now isn't actually from mining. It's actually from trading. I don't know if that's necessarily the best way to do it um, rather than just mining. One stack of emerald blocks um, equals two stacks of redstone blocks. So to me, that's a pretty good trade, but I'm not 100% sure if that's a great trade. Uh, if I've like it doesn't seem that bad because it doesn't take that long it takes about five minutes i would say to get a stack of emerald blocks right now uh from the uh the book trade down there uh maybe a little longer maybe like 10 um but then also to factor in the time you have to actually trade with the clerics which probably takes probably like 20 so it's probably like 30 minutes to get two stacks of redstone blocks and i feel like that's quicker than if I was mining. Uh, may not be the case, so maybe I'll have to test that out one day.
Okay, so that's actually going to be the end of the episode. Um, we didn't get a whole bunch of um, stuff on camera done. Um, mainly just the sugarcane farm. I definitely wanted to show you all the stuff I was doing off camera, so that took up most of the episode along with doing the sugarcane farm. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe. Thank you.